Greetings, folks. Joseph Kursky here with you. And having recently migrated 10 ArcMap or ArcGIS desktop lessons to ArcGIS Pro, and also having been involved with GIS education for many decades, I wish to share some reflections on migrating content and lessons from ArcGIS Desktop or ArcMap to ArcGIS Pro. Now those of you in GIS education are very familiar with the rapid change of the field of geospatial technologies, coupled with the rapidly changing educational and workplace needs. I contend that given these changes, the content and the skills we must teach and the means by which we teach must also change. Given the wide variety of tutorials and help files containing graphics and videos, networking and the tools to collaborate, ask questions and share ideas, students, faculty and GIS professionals have an amazing, amazing variety of learning options at their fingertips. Thus, I do not believe we need to be focused on tool-based approaches any longer, such as how to geocode, how to georegister, and so on, but rather how to solve problems using GIS. For a related discussion on this point, see David DiBiase's post, Stop Teaching GIS. I think you'll find it very informative and intriguing. We need to help students learn how to learn, whether in GIS and, I contend, in any other field. Emulating the kind of resource gathering, networking, and problem solving that they will assuredly use in the workplace. Some might argue that writing and asking students to go through lessons such as the 10 that I recently converted from ArcGIS Desktop or ArcMap to ArcGIS Pro is no longer needed. Well, in my experience in teaching for over 25 years at the university level, I still find that this style of lesson still has its place in learning as students going through these activities learn an entire workflow of geographic inquiry, including asking geographic questions, gathering data, analyzing data, making decisions, making assessments, and communicating the results of their research. Another reason why I created these lessons is so that you can place each lesson side by side to compare the ArcMap version and the ArcGIS Pro version. My observations after creating these ArcGIS Pro lessons or versions of, of my formerly ArcGIS desktop or ArcMap lessons are as follows. Number one, I've used these lessons in several different universities, including at the University of Denver, and always pose a survey question about ArcGIS Pro at the end of the course. In 95% of the responses, students have stated that they found ArcGIS Pro to be easier to learn than ArcMap, more intuitive and more powerful and faster. Several students each term tell me that the use of Pro was one of their primary reasons for taking the course because their employer asked them to learn it. And moving forward into the 2020s, Pro will see further adoption and more importantly, further evolution. Every time it evolves, it becomes more powerful and easier to use at the same time. More powerful and easier to use at the same time. Point number two, as an instructor, you have a choice of either creating your own lessons or using existing lessons. That's true in any field, right? There are no shortage of existing lessons in GIS, ranging from the ArcGIS Learn Library to shared higher education resources such as the Geotech Center and iGET, ESRI and University MOOCs, and many other resources. Many of us, however, became instructors because we enjoy creating and customizing curriculum for specific courses and programs. If you are keen on migrating some of your existing ArcMap lessons to ArcGIS Pro, I did it, and so can you. Yes, it will take some time, but I find migrations, migrations is plural here, as I have lived through many such software migrations, and maybe you have as well, are like when you get rid of things while moving your own residence, your house, your apartment, your condo, whatever, wherever you live. It is a good opportunity to purge old content and make things even better. Perhaps you can get a graduate student to assist you in this effort. Point number three. I found that my ArcGIS Pro lessons were, were shorter than the ArcMap lessons for several reasons. The first reason is that the workflows in ArcGIS Pro are so much more logical and straightforward than in ArcMap. In ArcMap, for example, when you needed to geo-register an unprojected historical map or an aerial photo, you are sort of cast into this zone that sometimes 
left students wondering, well, which step do I do first? Whereas with ArcGIS Pro, you're placed into a wizard-driven, okay, step one, do this, make these choices. Are you satisfied? If not, here are some adjustments you can make. Okay, on to step two, do this. Ditto for hundreds of other tools and processes. These are much easier to follow and learn from using ArcGIS Pro. The second reason is that you don't need to screenshot everything any longer. And in fact, I implore you to please not screenshot very much because there are good existing resources for use if a student gets stuck on a certain section. In the past, I admit that all of us did have to create our own graphics and screenshots because these were by and large all that the students had, right? If they had difficulty, but no longer. Number two, students being the resourceful people they are will not read your precious screenshots very much, if at all. They know where to find other resources and will find them if they have difficulty. Of course, you can provide guidance as to where these resources are, but just like anything else these days that people want to learn, such as fixing a faucet or playing the ukulele, there's a video, right? There's a graphic, there's a tutorial on everything from geocoding to writing arcade expressions <clears throat> and more. If you do screenshot to excess and make your lessons consequently long, you will remain in this continuous cycle of having to update and curate your lessons. Please don't do this. Rather, spend less time updating curriculum and that newfound time creating new curricular ideas, teaching techniques, and furthering your own research. In sum, I think it's worthwhile to migrate your ArcGIS desktop or ArcMap lessons and the curriculum that you've based on that software to ArcGIS Pro. I also encourage you to explore SaaS options, software as a service, ArcGIS Online, Business Analyst Web, ArcGIS Urban, ArcGIS Insights. These are powerful and they're becoming ever more so. So there are some choices to make with tools, but remember the overall goals and pick the appropriate tool, the most appropriate tool for the job for your to meet your course objective, your program objective. And I just encourage you again, to use this opportunity in these software migrations to rethink what you need to teach, how you need to teach it. One example, and then I'll close, I promise. Going to census.gov and downloading the geometry, the census tracts, the block groups, the counties, the political and statistical area boundaries, and then going to the same website and in a different place on that website, downloading the demographic information, joining that information together, and then being able to do your analysis. That is a workflow that has been in many, many, many GIS courses over the years. Do you need to do that anymore? There are loads, as I describe in another essay on GeoNet, if you want to take a look at it, of ways of bringing in that census data directly into ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Pro without that long workflow of downloading, downloading, joining, figuring out what the field names are. I just contend that that's an example of just because you and I did it, you know, and it built character doesn't mean students need to do that and many other workflows that I could name. Have them get that data quickly. Sure, be critical of the data, know where it came from, the source, how often it was updated, and so on, as I explained many times in my Spatial Reserves data blog, along with my colleague Jill Clark. We talk about being critical of mapped data and why that's important. The point is here, just because you and I did that, and yes, it was it built some skills for sure. That's the example that I wanted to bring up where to get you thinking about there are ways of obtaining data and being critical of it that allow you more quickly to jump to the analysis stage, looking at the whys of where. That's really the goal, is to look at patterns, relationships, and trends, and to use GIS as a tool for making our world better and empowering those students to making wiser decisions, not only in the university, but afterwards as they graduate. So I just bring up that census example of using this time and these new ways of obtaining and analyzing to nudge you out of, you don't, you don't need to replicate exactly that lesson and keep bringing it forward. This is a time for you to kind of restructure what you're teaching, why you're teaching it. 
I realize that there, there's some time involved in doing that, but I think it will be eminently worth it, and I wish you all the best. Thanks.